Hi, this is Finite Math Modeling 2.4 Notes. What we're going to be doing is scheduling tasks, and we're also going to be doing some critical path schedules with that. And we're going to try to see if we can find an optimal completion time for setting up uh, certain tasks and certain machines that we're dealing with. So the two processes we're going to deal with, one is list processing algorithm, and then beyond that, Something that will specialize that a little bit would be critical path scheduling. The third one I got on here, it's actually in the next section, but that's what we'll be doing uh, later on when we remove some prerequisites. Okay, so following digraph, this is the same digraph that we had before. However, I put in two other tasks that G takes seven uh, units of time to complete and H takes three units of time to complete. And so what we're going to try to do is figure out, okay, I want to put this onto two different machines. We might give you a different, uh, different number of machines, but uh, diff two different machines, people working, lots of different things that we can kind of classify this as, but a lot of times we'll just say machine, two machines that we're gonna put this on. So first of all, when we did our critical path analysis on this same thing before, what we found out that the longest path was this path which took 15 units. And so this would be the longest path, so this would be our earliest completion time. And so we can't complete everything until we complete this certain path. So if we can finish in 15 time units, let's just call them minutes, 15 minutes, what that means then is that uh, that's the optimal way that we can do this process. If it's more than that, Okay, we're not hitting optimal. If, uh, maybe we can get better, I don't know. However, scheduling these things together, this will be our best. And so if we can hit our best, we're happy. So with a list processing algorithm, what happens is that they're gonna give us tasks in a certain order. So for instance, I've given you the order here. Say for instance that a uh, uh, boss thinks that, she thinks that this is the best order to try to put this stuff in, or this is the most important order, whatever. Or by experience, we find out that this is what we need to do. So we're gonna to try to schedule this in that order and try to get things done like that. Now that might not always work because if, for instance, if I have C, well C is a bad example, but if I have uh, D here, D has certain prerequisites and one of them is not E. And so we just have to go through and figure out if this order does work. So we're gonna set up a little chart here that will try to measure our completion time. So first of all, my list processing says, okay, let's start at C. C has five units of length, and so I'm gonna schedule five units of length here for C. So I'm gonna put a little five up above here. Then my next one in order is going to be this G. Well, G doesn't have any prerequisites. It's kind of standing all alone. So I could schedule G on another machine, and I said that that takes seven units. So then I have A next. A I want to schedule as soon as I can, and so I'm going to put that right after, so I can sneak that A in there on that first machine. Now I go to my next one, which would be my B. Well, now it's a choice, but I'm going to go to the first machine to put on my B. My B is four units length. So I'm going to put my B here. So now I'm up to 11 on that side, that machine. And then my next one's going to be D. Now with D, oh, I have to finish B in order to do D. So either I'm going to have a gap on this machine and then schedule it down here, or I could schedule it on this machine here right after I get done with B. So now D takes three. I'm going to put it on machine one. So I'm going to go here, and so this would be three units, so I'm going to be up to 14 here. So the reason I put it on there is because maybe I can start E then, because E, oh, F is next. So in my process here, I'm just going to put F out here for six units. Like that, and then I can take my E, and I can place my E down here. and E is just two, so this would be nine. Now double check that I did all my prerequisites. The biggest one here is E has to be completed after C. Yep, I did that. And notice that this number here, whoa, 
how did I do? Not very good. And so we need to try to get a more optimal solution. And maybe if our list processing algorithm was in a different order, maybe we would do better. And I did forget something here. I forgot my H. And so I still need to finish my H. That can be completed any time. So that would be three units. So I'm up here to 12. Okay. Okay, let's try this second one here. So try the second example with the list processing uh, of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and place those in and see what you come up with. Pause this and then see if I agree with you. So this is what I came up with when I placed it in these orders, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Notice I can put C down here. And this becomes up here, this is just our critical path, really. A, B, C, I'm sorry, A, B, D, F, and then finish. That means 15. Machine one would finish at 15 minutes. Machine two would finish at 17 minutes because we do have this additional G and H. And so let's think about a couple things here. If we did not have G and H, those are kind of separate tasks. But from our model up here, the critical path tells us that we have 15 minutes. So without G and H, we would have in the red down here at this thing right here, we would have satisfied the optimal solution with the red. But since we had G and H extra tasks, then we don't have the optimal so that we're back down. Um, we, we have a completion time then of 17 overall for all of these tasks. Okay. Now, if you notice, we don't have any gaps. Sometimes there might be gaps depending upon your prerequisite. So for instance, if E right here would have had a prerequisite of D, I would have had to probably push this over to here and started that unless if I could have fit G or H in there. So you could skip over some of these things to fit other things in there on this process. But we usually go by the order that is there. I hope this all makes sense. Also, here's a big gap here for downtime on machine two for this situation up here. So this is not very good. Here, we only have downtime of two minutes. Not bad. Okay. So we're trying to make this optimal for our machine usage. Next page. So what we want to do now is to do critical path scheduling. So when I thought of critical path scheduling, I thought you would just go ahead and just schedule this whole path. And once you schedule that whole path, can you fit these other things in? But it's not exactly that. And what we're trying to do is, you know, like if we're doing computer programming, we want to figure out an algorithm that will set us up so that we're optimal. Well, what we're finding out now is that it's kind of hard to get optimal all the time, but what we want to do with critical path scheduling is find a task that starts the critical path. So that would be for us A, because we found this to be our critical path. If there's more than one, start with a lower number or lower letter. Just arbitrarily pick one. Then place the task found in number one next on the list L. So once we do that, we go ahead and put that down. So let's start this and see how this goes. So critical path, we says we said uh, is this path right here, so I'm going to put down A. Now that does not mean that we put down B. So this means now go ahead and remove that task from the graph and the edges attached to it. Now you'll have a new order to your critical path. And then if you have vertices left, go to step one or no vertices, you're done. So I need to erase this right here and this vertex because that's all that's coming out from that A. So now if we evaluate a critical path again, we actually find out that this 4, 3, 6 is less than this 5, 3, 6. And so what we have to do is we have to uh, go ahead and take this path here and use that under this task. And so this would be the start of our new critical path that we do have. So we're going to have to write down C. And then we're going to go ahead and wipe this out. So we take out the C take out everything that's connected to it like that and then we find our next critical pass as you can probably tell here that we do have we're back to this one as our critical path and so that's just going to be B I wipe out B I wipe that out and I'm going to end up with D as my next because that's 9 compared to my E and so that would be a D now my critical path is going to be these two together so I have to go to E and wipe that one out 
And so now all I'm left with is F. Now, this example, G and H probably aren't as crucial because if we do start talking about a critical path, critical path is just with the, the whole graph. If we have separate independent tasks, well, we can place those in any place we can, any time we want. And so mainly we're talking about this situation if we're doing this critical path analysis. So what have I done? Well, what I did was I started a list processing order that I would go by now. And so just like we did on the previous page, we're going to use A, C, B, D, E, F in order to sort all this out. So down here, I, I started placing these in the, this order. So I placed A, I placed B, then, I'm sorry, I placed A, then C. And I could do that on separate machines because there is not a prerequisite for this C, but then B has a prerequisite of A. So I could start that right after that on machine one. And then D has a prerequisite of B. So I started that right after B got done. E doesn't have a prerequisite besides C, so I could put that right after C on machine two. Now F, where am I gonna place F? Well, what makes most sense? Well, the earliest that I can start it. Well, in all actuality, it doesn't matter which one I'm picking. I could put it on machine two, and this is going to be a total of six, but here I'm up to nine. And so then this would be 15. Ooh, that turns out to be our optimal solution. I do have a gap here of downtime. So maybe you're retooling the machine or whatever you have to do, but there is downtime that we do end up with this. If I would have put F up here, which I could have easily, I could have put F here too, then I would not have downtime on a machine, and so you just have to pick whichever one works out for, for your company, whatever you're doing. Notice I didn't place G and H, and so I'm kind of ignoring them in this situation. Okay, So this did turn out with the optimal solution. The problem is, though, is that critical path scheduling doesn't always end up with the optimal solution. So we have to be careful with that. So just because you think that it might work and get the optimal solution, it doesn't always. So I asked the question here, how can we improve our solution? Well, we can't because <laughs> we did get the optimal critical path that we're dealing with. But sometimes, like I said, we don't. Well, but if we're trying to be efficient, be a company, make this better, what might you do to improve our solution? Well, there are some definite ways to do this. Think about it for a minute. But what I could do is reduce time on tasks. So I'm thinking that this one might be inefficient, so I might want to reduce that. Does that help me in my critical path analysis here? Maybe, maybe not. You could reduce one, and sometimes you reduce times, and it, it increases the amount of scheduling that you do have, which seems weird. However, you just end up with more gaps in how you do that. So we can reduce task time. How about uh, here I got two machines. Instead of having two machines, I could add a machine. The interesting part about this, though, is that adding machines sometimes you still have to take care of the critical path. And so that really might not minimize our time. We've already hit our optimal time. So this might not help. And so as a company, this is a great decision. Oh, we're just going to add more machines. Well, it might not help if you're not getting the right things to the right places at the right time. And then what else might we do? Well, we might want to try to remove prerequisites. Maybe somewhere in your manufacturing or whatever you're doing, you could take out that B is dependent on A. Maybe you can do that. So these are possibilities, but obviously you might not be able to reduce task time. You might not be able to remove prerequisites. You might not be able to afford a new machine and add a machine. So, but these are things that you think about to make your system more efficient. And if there is something that's really bogging us down, making something really long, and downtime on the other machine, then we need to fix that and say, well, okay, maybe I can remove a prerequisite. But a lot of times you have prerequisites because you've got to assemble this before you assemble that, so on, okay? 
Well, I hope this gets you a start on your critical path scheduling and your, your scheduling in general and gives you an idea. You can read the text for a little bit more examples. Their notation is slightly different, but it should be pretty much the same for what we're doing. All right. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day. Take care.